Hi, I'm Zoe. And I'm Simon. And since our first trip together over a decade ago, we've taken every opportunity we can get to travel, explore new countries and try new food. In this video series, we are flying to Italy for a two-week trip to eat lots of great food while also exploring Italy's countryside by car. And from here on, everything went quite quickly, as our balloon was ready for takeoff as soon as we got out of the car. This was our first balloon ride, so we didn't really know what to expect. We stepped into the balloon's basket together with a balloonist and three other people, and after a short safety briefing, we took off into the sky. A balloonist has one of the coolest job titles in the world, next to astronaut and race car driver. And what we learn from our balloonist is that as steering is limited, a hot air balloon's destination is wherever the wind takes it. And it was becoming clear that at this high altitude, it was pretty much wind still, which would have meant that we'd be landing very close to where we started. So instead of floating up higher, we did the opposite and ascended towards the ground. And this was one of the coolest parts of our flight. When you're high up in the hot air balloon, the views are great, but you're so far from the ground that you feel quite detached from everything. But once we were closer again, close enough to reach for the treetops, everything felt much more real. We could interact with children playing outside, wave to the people that were working on the vineyards below or to people in cars that must have been quite surprised at seeing a massive balloon in front of them. But then for the finale of the flight, it was time to take the party up higher. And as the sun was coming up behind the mountains, bursting through the clouds, we ascended higher than we had been before. And the view from here was nothing short of spectacular. I thought it would be hot in a hot air balloon. Yeah, it was so <laughs> hot. <laughs>
we landed basically <laughs> in some random field with a lot of trees so the <laughs> landing was <laughs> quite tight super precision landing really interesting to see um, and we made it feels a little bit surreal doesn't it <laughs> yes. it's like standing in the air and I don't know what height <laughs> yeah I also don't know how high it was but it's basically just you're just loud standing level. there <laughs> yeah and it's loud and it's warm but the view is incredible and I think now we're gonna have uh, a Prosecco breakfast how idyllic is our landing area with yeah. these olive trees super nice We just came back from the balloon ride and it's definitely really cool. If you have the opportunity, it's a really nice way to explore the Tuscan countryside uh, from above, from basically a human drone perspective. It was a really good experience. Yeah. And it wasn't as scary as I initially thought. What I underestimated was how hot the hot air balloon is once the burners get going and also a bit loud. But the fire was actually, actually the thing I was most afraid of, not the height or anything, but just being in this little basket with five, five other people, seeing that fire right above you and just thinking, oh, if it will spread anywhere, we're all dead. But yeah. it didn't, and I guess it's uh, not the highest possibility. So. No, it's, I think it's, it's a pretty safe activity. But the company we went with is called TuscanyBallooning.com. Um, it's the company called it's, it's Tuscany. not called dot com but that's the domain and the company is called Tuscany Ballooning and we can definitely recommend them. Not sponsored. Maybe next time. <laughs> <laughs> but now we're going for some pasta in Volterra, which is a little town about 30 minutes from here. So let's explore it and let's find somewhere to eat. gone for some tagliatelle with porcini mushrooms. They're quite good. And we have a really spectacular view. Time for some coffee. And we have uh, two kinds of chini, one with spices in it. it tastes a bit like gingerbread. And gingerbread is my favorite, so that's mine. We've now come to the Roman theater of Volterra, or what's left of it. And it's, it's like a mini version of the Colosseum, but with way less tourists. There isn't really anyone here except for us, which is uh, super nice. They fit about 3,000 people in here, which is quite impressive. But also the stairs, or the, the steps were going way up to this um, city wall. So we were basically, we are now standing on the cheapest of the <laughs> cheap seats here. But we can still see quite yeah. well. Gelato test in Volterra. Good one. The white chocolate and raspberry is divine. <laughs> <laughs> and I've got the... Um, the melting one. <laughs> the melting one, which is salted caramel and peanuts and pistachio. I think that's one of the best gelatos we've had so far. <laughs> Did you get some wet tissues in the gelateria? Yes. I cried enough <laughs> because my hands are so sticky. <laughs> I mean, it was a crisis situation and for I, about half an hour. And I solved it. Okay, it's called logical problem solving. Yeah, I'm skills. really proud of you. So our brief summary of Volterra is: we've got some nice views, some great architecture, and we also had some really nice food. And some German tourists, and <laughs> like us. I mean, we can't say anything. It's I just, know. It's just what it is.
So for dinner we got these sandwiches at a sandwich shop in Volterra. So yeah, I've gone for a sandwich with prosciutto crudo, which is dried ham. <laughs> and Italian ham, of course. And we've got some pecorino. Grilled, Grilled pecorino. pecorino. Yeah, yeah. Yes, and honey. So. Sounds pretty good. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> they are cold because we, um, we, well, we bought them a few hours ago. <laughs> uh, so I wonder if they're still tasty. Mm -hmm. But maybe it just, means they could marinate more in their own juices and um, got more flavor, more taste. Mm -hmm. The ham is perfect. I think the grilled pecorino cheese would have been a bit better in warm, but it's still pretty good. The bread is a bit much if you ask me. You have a lot of bread and it's a bit like, hard to get through. But all in all, it's a pretty good dinner, especially together with this local wine. And the view is also not bad. The view is amazing. Again. Mine is a little bit more of a mess um, because it's pulled pork and I really don't know how it's going to taste cold. It was quite nice with the pecorino cheese and the. Um, I've also got some dried tomatoes on top. It's quite a good combo. And that pretty much concludes our day.